This is Kayla Woolham, a 16 year old who dreamt of breaking world records. The Nat Barbell weighs 445 pounds. And I can't get it! Yeah! To most, it's extremely confusing as to why this is even possible. The average novice of his weight and age can only deadlift around 180 pounds, not even half of this. If you've been in a gym long enough, you can probably relate to this in one way or another. Either to the guy deadlifting, why am I so strong, yet look less muscular than people who are weaker than me, or to the people looking on in shock, how come I'm much more muscular? yet cannot lift the same. Both ways, you probably end up frustrated, blaming your bad genetics. But here's the thing, that was far from his most impressive lift. Years later, he went on to fulfill his dream, lifting 950 pounds, almost four and a half times his body weight. It just doesn't seem like this should be possible. For example, take four times world's strongest man, Brian Shaw, often weighing in at over 400 pounds. It's estimated that his max deadlift, under the same powerlifting rules, falls below this at around 880 pounds. Even one of the strongest people to ever walk the planet would struggle to execute this same lift. And Kayla's not the only one displaying seemingly supernatural strength. We also have the bench press, here is Matt Does Fitness, maxing out at 397 pounds. Seems about right for his build. Well, a considerably smaller YouTuber, UF Powerlifter, was able to bench press 410 pounds, over two and a half times his body weight. So what's going on? And is a bigger muscle really a stronger one? The fact is, you and one of your friends could follow the exact same program and you'll both get different results. Some people just have better genetics for gaining strength, others for looking muscular. And on top of this, social media is frequently used by people to manipulate how good they look. Then of course you have fake weights. I like ego lifting. So it can often be confusing, but let's take off the tin foil hats and ignore the step development to focus a bit more on the science. You're a fake and a Starting with muscle fibers. While the absolute strength of a muscle fiber increases with the size of a fiber, the fiber's relative strength tends to decrease. A study found that the relative strength of bodybuilders' muscle fibers was 62% less than that of power athletes. This may well be that power athletes' muscle fibers have a greater relative strength from their heavy explosive training. The trouble is, there's no direct evidence to support this. Greg Knuckles pointed out that it could just be having muscle fibers with a higher specific tension predisposes you for success in power sports where explosive relative strength is important. Whereas having muscle fibers with a weaker relative strength allows bodybuilders to tolerate higher training volumes with a lower risk of injury as each contraction is less forceful. Either way, variation in muscle fibers relative strength could be the first piece of the puzzle to explain as to why Kayla can outlift more muscular looking people. Now, if we zoom out from the individual muscle fibers, the next thing to look at is the muscle's intrinsic ability to produce force. Muscle size and muscle architecture explain around 50 to 70% the variation in how hard a muscle can contract. The rest depend on factors that affect muscle strength independent of muscle size. And this can be explained by the concept known as normalized muscle force, where specific tension can be thought of as a muscle fiber's relative strength. Normalized muscle force can be thought of as the whole muscle's relative strength. And similarly to individual muscle fibers, the amount of force a muscle can produce varies from person to person, even if the muscle is the same size. But strength isn't all about the actual contraction of the muscle. Let's say you're doing a bicep curl. When muscles contract, they pull against bones, creating a rotational force or torque. Similarly to the way a spanner works, if you have a longer handle, you can create a greater force. In this situation, the handle is known as the moment arm, and the longer it is, given all things equal, the stronger you'll be. If you compare two people whose quads were the exact same strength, but one of them had a fortunate moment arm, and the other had an unfortunate one, the person with the longer muscle moment arm would be able to produce a 19% larger knee extensor moment. This variation in muscle moment arms has been shown to account for around 20% of the variability in men's knee extension strength. We can expect that those who are elite at a particular exercise to have favorable muscle moment arms for that particular movement. 
Muscle bellies and insertion points can also have an impact on your appearance. For example, the calf muscles as shown here. On the left, we have a longer muscle belly and shorter tendon, which looks arguably more impressive than the shorter muscle belly and longer tendon on the right. Another example is in the biceps. On the left is IFBB pro Greg Duchette, who has favorable long muscle bellies. Then on the right, Louis Marco with shorter muscle bellies. Of course, there's a size difference, but this highlights how muscle belly variation can help you have fuller looking arms and make you look bigger as a result. One of the most significant genetic influences on your strength for a lift is of course your anthropometry. Physical proportions can vary greatly from person to person. For the deadlift in particular, it's often favorable to have long arms and a short torso. As you can see, the person on the left has a shorter range of motion. His hips are also closer to the bar, reducing the moment he has to fight against. His back is more upright and to top it all off, his joint angles are more open, which is also advantageous. You can almost certainly lift more weight from this position as opposed to this position. Assuming all things equal but proportions, the guy on the left will destroy the person on the right. A good real world example is that of Lamar Garn, where you can quite clearly see his advantageous longer arms aiding his impressive deadlift. When you combine all of these factors, the variation between how strong someone is and how muscular they are begins to make a lot more sense. While you may be annoyed at your short arms for the deadlift, there is some good news. You may be better suited to bench pressing, a longer Achilles tendon, and you may be at an advantage for long distance running. So it's not just a case of good or bad. And while most of these things are unchangeable, there's also things which you can change and develop. In my last video on Gymshark, a few people in the comment section were essentially using unrealistic body standards and their bad genetics as an excuse as to not train at all, which is completely ridiculous. The fact is, many of these physical traits are normally distributed, so they're probably not as bad as you're making them out to be. Secondly, a healthy adult with suboptimal genetics who follows a good, well-structured program could achieve a strength standard or physique naturally, which some people claim took steroids to build. So stop with this cop-out stuff. Stop blaming your genetics. The first influencing factor is, of course, technique and practice. The fact is, without an insane amount of practice and technique adjustment to best optimize his deadlift form, Kayla would never have increased his deadlift from 445 to 950 pounds. In addition to technical proficiency, neural efficiency plays a very key role. It's possible to develop a better mind-muscle connection from training motor neuron pathways. With more practice of a particular exercise, your neural efficiency will likely improve and therefore the amount of weight you can lift. There's also performance enhancing drugs which allow people to gain a lot more strength than muscle. A large amount of world-class strength athletes do take them. As Clarence Kennedy said best, A lot of people don't realize that professional athletes use drugs. And people that know also assume everyone knows. Um, but I'd say only a small percentage of the population knows what's going on. The fact is, performance enhancing drugs will likely always be a part of competitive sports. And while I don't advocate them myself, it's completely understandable why people use them. They can be simply effective. Expect to put on 50 pounds on your bench press in three months. For men, women are not gonna gain that kind of strength. But for men, 50 pounds for women, probably half of that. I think it's also important to consider the effect that body fat has on perceived strength. Many would assume that the Christian Guzman on the left is stronger than the one on the right when in reality, it's the other way around. While this covers most of the main factors, which influences how strong someone appears to be versus how strong they actually are, it would be a long, and for most people, unnecessary process to explore them all. So what does this mean for you? The fact is, many of these physical traits are normally distributed, so it's unlikely you have truly bad genetics. More likely, you fall in the average range. When many people see a powerlifter lifting a disproportionate amount of weight, they assume that strength training is pointless. After all, they don't just want to be strong, they want to look strong as well. But the fact remains, a bigger muscle is a stronger muscle. 
relative to the person. You only have to compare 16 year old Kayla to early 20s Kayla to see this. Regardless of whether you want to get stronger or gain more muscle, strength progression should be your goal. Genetics do limit how big or strong you can get, but most of the people complaining about it are nowhere near their strength potential. And most people have completely average genetics, which can in fact take them very far. There are probably people with better deadlifting genetics than Kayla. One of you may be watching this video. The difference is he capitalized on his favorable genetics by optimizing all of the variables which he can control. If you want to explore the contributors to strength, Greg Knuckles has a very in-depth article which this video is based on. It will be linked in the description. But the most important takeaway from this, my reason for making it, is that in a world full of almost 8 billion people, there's just too many variables for comparison to be a good thing. Most of the time, instead of focusing on your genetic flaws and what other people are doing, progressive overload should be your goal. Train harder than last time! Or as Kayla said himself, don't worry about being the strongest, worry about being stronger.